This video discusses cheating in relationships, which may be triggering for some viewers. If you find that you're feeling upset, please take care of your mental health. Consider pausing the video, reaching out to a trusted friend or to a counsellor or helpline for support. Your well-being matters. Decided to go and ask his mom. Mom, I want to go on my side chick, but I don't feel like going. I want to go to my wife instead. Where do I do? And mom is like, you go to your wife, sugar bear, if that's what you want to do. Seriously, this is messed up. Hello, hello. How are you today, guys? Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, my name is Iraya, aka Mrs. A. Today's video, I'm guessing you've probably noticed that it's a bit different. So before I even go into it, I'd like to give you a bit of a, of a background. Going into TikTok and listening to other people's content, I came across certain videos and most of them were these reaction stroke commentary videos. And, you know, there are a lot of them, to be honest. I have watched so many of them. But there was this particular video. It literally caught my eye. And I wasn't the only one who got attracted to it because it was almost like traffic. Okay. People are flooded on it. So I was just like, hang on a minute. What's going on here? Yeah, let's get right into it. So 2018, when my husband and I first separated, once we got back together, I ended up getting pregnant. Honestly, it wasn't really the best time because we were trying to work on our marriage, rekindle our intimacy, you know, and now we have to also worry about having another baby. Yeah, I had to pause it there. But from what she's saying, there was an issue and then they sort of came together, tried to work it out. And then boom, they got pregnant. It wasn't desirable because they had issues. They were trying to work it out. The last thing that they wanted to have to figure out or think about is baby to some extent i get it to some extent i don't and the reason why is because this woman is not a side chick okay she's not a side chick she is a legitimate wife from what i understand so i was just thinking to myself how will it feel like if you were married to somebody um and because of xyz reasons you don't even feel comfortable to get pregnant again. That was when I was just like, oh, okay. It already doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel good. But we all know that women at certain ages, it becomes a bit tricky. So if you have to put or risk all of that based on somebody's feelings of, okay, we're trying to work things out, but now you're pregnant, you know, and you, then that's really sad. And that was my first thought. And at this point, I felt like, Whoever this woman is, that must have been very difficult for her. First sonogram that I got, I sent it to my husband and he didn't even respond. Like that's how clocked out he was of our relationship. And it wasn't until I want to say like a month or two, maybe three months later that I found out that he was talking to someone at his job and they were in a relationship. So the whole Okay, so basically things went off. They kind of went their separate ways. Still married, remember? But she said they just weren't talking, but she found out that her husband was dating somebody else. How nice. Yeah. Some people's pregnancy is a matter of life and death. Some people's pregnancy is a breeze in the park. So I don't know what kind of pregnancy she had, but even if your pregnancy was that easy, that relaxing, that enjoyable, yes. there are factors that will help navigate that journey for you. And some of those factors is when you have your loved ones, especially the one that you did that business with you know, with you and supporting you. But when they decide to reject you and ignore you. You've had a baby already. So having another baby is not so much of like a shock to the system. There are three main people involved in this. The woman, her husband and the mother-in-law. My questions were more focused on the man and his mother. This is how mom's encourage their kids then i don't know where the world is gonna go but anyway 
Let's carry on. The whole duration of my pregnancy, he is with that woman and we have not communicated at all. No calls, no texts. He doesn't know anything about the baby. I don't know what's going on outside of like when I have conversations with his mom. It was hard because I'm pregnant, I'm hormonal and I love his mom, but there were even moments where talking to his mom was kind of detrimental for me because she would tell me things like, oh, you know, they're having fun and they really like each other. So in my mind, I'm thinking he's in love with her and this is it. Like our marriage is over. So basically, she was like her hormones. It's normal. No matter what, yes, hormones are going to play a part. But she was like, as much as she loved her mother-in-law, she mother-in-law was telling her things like, oh, they're happy. They're having fun. What? Okay. 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 So when I say I've got questions for the mother-in-law, this is one of the big questions. Like, you are a woman, probably have daughters. I don't know. How will you feel if somebody treats your daughter like that? How will you feel if somebody treated you like that? And how will you even feel if the tables were turned around and somebody was treating your son like that? So this part, she talked about dreams that she had and the fact that, you know, she was getting messages from God about him and stuff like that. I'm going to skip some of those because I'm not really going to comment on that because at the end of the day, it's her spiritual belief. I wasn't there when God was talking to her, so I can neither deny or confirm. Um, but there was this whole thing where people were like, sometimes your feelings play a part and your thoughts and blah, blah, blah. So how do you know? She knows what she heard. Uh, or didn't hear so i'm just gonna you know that okay, skip that over. part to the other parts where and i feel I like it's really telling me something that confirmed it. and one night i'm watching this prophetic video and at the time i didn't really like prophetic videos too much i was very like you know aware that some of these prophets are false so i didn't really take a lot of these videos too seriously but this night one of the videos they were talking about that god was going to do something in three days for some reason it stuck with me and i took mental note okay three days something is going to happen so the third day comes and I'm eating my bowl of cereal at night like I normally did. It was like 11 o'clock and I'm getting ready to get in a bed and I lift my leg up to get into the bed and I felt like this sharp pain, like, you know, in my abdomen area. I get up and I walk to the bathroom. I go sit down and a gush of water comes out. My water breaks. So I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm calling out to my mom. She comes running out. Her first thing is, well, I'm going to go tell Donnie. You listen to that part where she was um, watching a prophetic message and it says something's gonna happen in three days her waters broke and then her husband her mom decided to call her husband according to her she didn't want the husband the mom to ring the husband because he's not been involved with them for so long but you know moms if a mom wants to do something they do it anyway so she went ahead and called and according to her when she got up to leave and she looked through the window she didn't believe the man was going to come she looked through the window and he was there her husband and dad were sitting on the back so they go to the hospital. Get in my dad's van and we head to the hospital. So I get to the emergency room, they put us in a wheelchair and now we're just waiting for them to bring me into a room. So as I'm sitting there, my husband is there with us but we're not saying a word to each other. So right, right, okay. Well, she kind of talked about her emotions and how it was a bit all over the place because she'd never had like a natural bath um, because she had caesarean the first time and this time she needs to push, which is the main point. You know, is the fact that there's so much going on with the woman, but this so-called husband of yours, he does not give a toss, basically. And you will find out why I said that. Right, so let's skip to the next video. Let's skip to the good part of the say, which one is it? This one? So I see change into like the gown and things like that. Once I change into the gown, they basically allowed me to like walk through the hallways to kind of make the labor progress. As I'm walking in the hallways, my mom is behind me and my husband is sitting on a chair. They had some chairs up against the wall and he's knocked out because he was working overnight job. Mind you, it is 11 o'clock. So he's literally snoring out loud. I'm walking, contractions are coming on strong. So I finally get back to the room. My husband is also sitting in the room and my mom is there with me and I'm still walking around because now I'm like the contractions. Okay, so there was a lot that she said here and I'm not going to play all of it. So basically, he came in obviously after mom called him, um, but he'd come from a night shift. So he had a good, you know, sleep and a snore at the hospital. Um, normally people would be wide awake, especially when you haven't been around for nine flipping months. And then you sadly turn up one day, 
for my night shift and decide to sleep. Well, well, let's just give benefit of the doubt or let's just say, okay, sleep can sometimes take over you. So yeah, whatever. Um, but when you listen to her, they couldn't say a word to any, to each other. They couldn't. And I was just like, this is normal because he's been absent for so long. What's he going to say? He's just going to watch you and see your reaction. Um, so there were parts when she talked about the doctor asking him to come and hold her. Um, and she feeling a sense of peace around that, um, linking it to some of the messages she was getting and all that. But anyway, um, he at the end of the whole pregnancy, I mean, the whole childbirth decided to leave. And she was like, she was getting mentally prepared to be by herself um, because obviously he was leaving. At that point, I'm just like, this guy is just not serious. Here I am preparing to be with my baby by myself for the first night. And mentally, I was ready. I was like, all right, this is just what it is. So I turned the TV on. I'm laying in the bed watching the TV and I hear a knock at the door. I'm thinking it's the nurse because y'all know when you have babies, the nurses are coming in and out constantly all day. And there is a curtain right in front of the door. So the person opens the door and walks in. I still can't see them until they pull the curtain back. They pull the curtain back and it's my husband, y'all. And not only is it just him, he has a bouquet of flowers in his hand. So I am completely shocked. He walks in, he sits on the bed in front of me, and for like 30 seconds, we're just looking at each other, just silent. He hands me the flowers, I take them, I put them on the table, and we're back to silence again. What do you expect, woman? I am completely shocked. Why is that such a big thing? He has a bouquet of flowers. He should have had that bouquet of flowers on his way to the hospital, okay, ready for the victory. Instead of coming to sit there and snoring, going back home to decide what he wanted because when she carries on it was like he was in two minds he didn't know what to do he went home he was going to go to the side chick and then he was like no no, no i don't want to go to my side chick i don't want to go to my side chick i want to go to my wife such a confused dot com kind of man so then he, he decided to go and ask his mom mom i want to go with my side chick but i don't feel like going i want to go to my wife instead what do I do? Seriously, this is messed up. Like, me that he's gonna come over tomorrow. The next day comes, and I'm waiting for him hours long. I don't know where he's at. I'm texting him. He's not responding. So he finally gets to my mom's house, and he admits that he had been over at the other woman's house because he felt like he needed to give her closure because he had ended their relationship abruptly, and he knew that she was feeling some type of way. Now, in my mind, I'm like, Shit. my question is, what kind of closure did he go and give her? I'm just asking, what kind of closure? If you end a relationship abruptly, you ended it abruptly. What kind of closure again? Go and start begging. I'm really sorry that and like that woman is not going to listen. This is how people like look for trouble for themselves because if that woman is crazy, she's just going to do something to you when you come to the house. So unless the kind of closure is, you know, more to it kind of closure, I don't know what kind of closure that is. No, I don't no closure i'm your wife but i also understood that they had been together for almost nine months and so there was still something there and after that we laid in that bed i laid on his chest and he just told me how much he missed us and how much he loves me and he kind of just poured his heart out to me i could tell he was at peace just being with his family now i was in a place um yeah so he's obviously going to end it abruptly and he's come back to happy family really like really Seriously. Anyway, she said that um, he admitted that he can't pretend like he's feeling some kind of way towards her and grieving the other woman. Like, I don't even know if he was. Like, he's just lucky. He feels like he's lucky to have his family back because, and I don't know, it looks like this is Kip, but there was a part where he talked about the fact that the relationship was toxic. And I think that's the, that is what I was really looking for. Let's see if it will come here. If not, I would have probably skipped it, but. Reason he wasn't ready. And so he ended up telling me one time, like, say, this is too soon for this. Like, I can't just pretend like I'm still not feeling some type of way about you. I can't pretend that I'm not like grieving this other woman. Like, I just need some time. So a week goes by where we do not talk at all. 
And at the end of that week, he sends me a message and says, I think we should be friends. And y'all, I almost lost it. I'm like, ain't no way I'm going to be right back in this place where this man just wants to be friends. So I texted him. I said, you only to be friends? He's like, no, dummy. I want us to rebuild our friendship. I want us to start being friends again. And y'all, that relationship was like for him and what they went through and how much they argued and, and how much they fought. And it was just very, very toxic. And so I pray that y'all hear Okay, it. so this is the part. So he told her about the kind of relationship that he had with the other woman and apparently it was very toxic they argued all the time basically they had issues it was not paradise like she may have thought apparently it wasn't this is where i question this man's intention for coming back to the house because look <laughs> People will always want to be comfortable. So when he's going there, he's running away from his marriage, thinking, oh, we can't have intimacy, whatever, you're pregnant again and I don't want you here, and he's going to another woman. They're arguing, they're toxic. Who wants to stay in that relationship? So now I begin to wonder, what is the real reason why he came back to you? Because at the time when he was like, Da, 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 didn't know what to do, sleeping, snoring, running around the place. Go. She said, you win, you get the divorce. He got upset. Then this whole thing started where it's almost like he started making his way wrong. Things were not all that good. Not all that. Things were actually toxic. When I got to this point, my whole perception about this issue changed because I was like, okay, people genuinely do repent. And then you will see the person is making the effort. This man seemed to be like living in paradise, baby. He was not lifting a finger to do nothing. It was the woman doing everything. But the thing is, he has confessed to her that relationship was toxic. Really? So did you actually come back to her because you wanted your family or because it didn't work out for you? That is food for thought. What exactly are we learning here? Mothers, please, you need to train your boys. Well, I guess it's not just boys because to be honest, everything that's happening with men, the women are also doing it. But seriously, the boy's mother, whoever she is, the part she played in this was very, very selfish. Not nice, not nice. My point here is if you are a woman, and you are spoiling your boy child rotten to the point where anything they do, you're supporting them. You are not helping yourself and you're not helping our society. So please stop it. This man knows how much she yearns to have him regardless of whatever condition. Wherever he goes, whatever he does, so long as he comes back, she's happy to have him. Okay? She has her own reasons and everything that she's backing it up with. But the man knows her. A man will test the waters. A man will do certain things to one woman, but will not do it to another woman. But that side chick was definitely not taking any BS from this man. Sometimes when you're not taking people's BS, they label it, oh, it's toxic, not respecting me and all sort of shenanigans like that. She wasn't having it because he's got somebody that he can easily get away with. So now he's gone into somebody else. He's probably going there to either boss her around or whatever. And she's like, oh, hell no, I'm not, I'm not. Sorry, we're not doing this. And all of a sudden it's toxic. So he knows where he can have his peace. And that's why he's back. This is my opinion anyway. And yeah, that's just what I think. I don't know what you think. I really wanted to put your comments in. Let me just know what you think, okay? What some men do, they learn to cover their tracks. And the women are like, oh yeah, you know, everything is good. I hope that's not the case. But, but it's possible. Yeah? Like the first time he was like telling you this is what I've done. And then the woman finally got at the boss and like, you know what, I've had it. All of a sudden, he start panicking and coming around. He's not going to be letting her see the trails if he's still doing it. After the initial video, people went into her comments like, <laughs> so she was like, you guys are attacking me, blah, blah, blah. I don't think she kind of got it really because you're a woman people can connect with you and people were like what are you trying to tell the younger generation you make this whole thing too acceptable like a man marks about 
Even if you have to forgive them, what did they do? Something is like, what did he do to make it look like he's truly remorseful? We didn't get that part. It, it, could it be the flowers? After nine months, flowers? So women were like, listen, don't make this, don't be dragging God into it. Anyway, they, they went for her to the point where she had 10 of the, the comments. Then she did another video to come against the women saying, you guys don't know about forgiveness. You guys don't read your Bible. You guys need to be forgiven. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Listen, man. Men, treat your wives like the way you want somebody to treat your sister. Are so you going to stand there and put on a big English on them? How do you call that? The vows. <laughs> After saying all the sweet succulent vows, I will do this and I'll do that. Then you start misbehaving. You guys need a creep on your bum. But anyway. Some men are really good. Some men are respectful. I don't want people to start thinking that I'm against the men in any way. I'm just against bad character. We need good things for our society. Because when your wife is happy and she goes to work, so she'll be good to her colleague. She's not going to be grumpy. She's not going to be a horrible boss. Some women are horrible because their husbands are pinching their bums at home and they take it to the office and start giving you headache. So we need a better society. Women, we need a better society. Some women are worse. I'm not gonna go there. But anyway, let me know what you think about this video. I feel like it's probably gonna be longer than I thought it would be, but I have thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing this video. If I come across any such videos that I feel like we can learn from on this journey to becoming our best selves, then I'm gonna bring it back. Women, be wise i'm not saying don't be forgiving but you've got to be wise you've got to be smart women you have got to be smart okay keep up your head let's be good to each other let's love each other bro i love you all i love you all i love you all i'm gonna see you in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'm looking forward to read your comments adios bye You did cross my mind Would you wait Wait for me, girl Yeah, me back to you